parts of the country have suffered infrastructural damage, particularly roads, in the past months. And this is due to severe weather. KwaZulu Natal has been the most affected since last year's April floods. The newly appointed Transport Minister, Sindisiwe Chigunga, will have to hit the ground running and try to tackle these problems, including rail infrastructure. Well, let's speak to uh, Minister Chikunga now, who takes over from Figile Mbalula, her party's Secretary General. Minister, good morning to you and thank you for your time. Let's begin with that uh, issue of roads and make it clear to the viewers, because I think there's always confusion about uh, national roads, provincial roads, and the list goes. Which roads is the department, National Department of Transport, responsible for? And what are you doing to alleviate the pressure, as you have already heard in that introduction, that some of them have been damaged by the ongoing floods? Thank you very much, and thank you for congratulating us. Strictly speaking, the Department of Transport at national level is responsible for national roads. Mm. So these are the roads that are owned by Sunral. These are the roads that are connecting cities to cities and are co connecting South Africa to its neighboring countries. And therefore, in the main, they will be your N1, your N whatever, and one citizen, and it's a national road. Yeah. And, and, and their state is, is really good, but there might be challenges with others which indeed we have a plan to ensure that those that require maintenance, refurbishment, or even construction for that matter, mm. are, that is being done. Yeah. So for Sunral, we have a very clear plan on what we will do with our roads. So I know for sure that if you drive on the N2 between uh, MLO and Pongola, there are challenges there, but there is already budget allocated for that. And there is a plan. We are therefore in the process, and I'm thinking Central is on the procurement process. So yeah. there is a plan for the national roads. Okay. Are there particular roads that stand out, national roads that stand out for you, where there are glaring issues that could lead to accidents, for example? You know, maybe either than accidents themselves, I mean themselves, N3 is the busiest road in South Africa mm. because it is connecting the Deben hub port, if you like, Deben premier port of South Africa, to the economic hub, which is Gauden. And with the challenges in the rail sector, then, of course, it is carrying a lot of traffic. And it is for that reason that there is a lot of construction that is taking place with the aim of expanding that, that corridor. Mm. But believe you me, with whatever that we do, if we don't find a solution in the aviation, and not aviation, I'm sorry, I'm attending aviation summit, in the rail sector, particularly the freight rail sector, that road will not be able to carry the traffic. And therefore, we will also, as the ministry, be looking at what the solutions are for the railway sector and railway corridor, particularly that rail corridor, yeah. because we need it so that we can move cargo from road to rail. And this has been said, but we think that we have tangible solutions to that, because I think what we've been saying all along, it has not worked, but I still don't want to share it with you as to what my thinking is <laughs> in as far as practically moving cargo from road to rail. You're being unfair, Minister. You could share this information. There's nothing wrong with Newsom Africa uh, getting the <laughs> scoop, but uh, I'll, I'll take you up on that on another day. But before we move to the rail sector, Minister, I quickly want to conclude the, the state of roads. You've made it clear that Sanral uh, takes care of those roads, whether it be refurbishment uh, and stuff like that. But ETOLs, is it now a a done deal that national government has officially taken off the pedal uh, from that particular project. It is now the baby of the Gauteng provincial government. Is that where things are? There are things that still need to, to be finalized. Um, 
so that we can then say that that project is now a done deal. Mm. So there will still be issues. You, you, you will understand that the Minister of Finance made some announcements during his MPPS uh, speech last year, and I think even this year. And I think the Premier of Gauteng also made some, some pronouncements. So there are still some loose ends that need to be uh, finalized. There are still T's that need to be crossed and I's that need to be dotted. But I think at least we have moved from where we, uh, we were, I think, a year ago. And that, uh, that's just those things. And I, I think that's what I need to say about that. You're not at liberty to give us a little bit more. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Let, let's then talk about the rail sector. Again, viewers may be confused. Who's actually responsible for the Ports Authority Transnet? I know for a fact that you're definitely responsible for PRASA. Are you responsible for Transnet as a department? Transnet is established in terms of the National Ports Act. The Department of Transport, the Minister of Transport, is the portfolio minister in terms of that act. We are therefore a policy department. And then the Department of Public Enterprises is then the shareholder department and shareholding ministry as such. So yes, when it comes to policy, we are responsible for that. We then have a very important structure that is established in terms of the act that I've quoted, which is the National Ports Consultative Council, which is also established by the Minister of Transport to advise him on what is happening in our ports that might require policy improvement or review of policy. Yeah. So that is the, 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 the role that we are playing as the Department of Transport. Okay. When the policy has to change or Drastic decisions have to be taken when, say, for instance, there's a project that needs to be done without following the open tender in terms of the constitution. The Minister of Transport plays an important role and implements Section 79 of that Act, which, of course, he must be in agreement with a TNPA and the Minister of, of, of Public Enterprises. So, yes, we do play an important role there, but we don't do the day-to-day -day running and, of course, whatever that is the responsibility of the shareholding ministry. Yeah. That is the business of the port is not our responsibility. Sure. I know I'm forcing you into a, a tight corner here, but I must ask you this on the back of what the president has said in parliament yesterday, and that is that DPE, Public Enterprises Ministry, is going to be phased out and it's actually going to be a very quick process if the deadline of next year is indeed true. There is a major issue, Minister, from the business community. They are very unhappy with the performance of Transnet, the leadership there. Do you agree with their sentiment that the leadership there has to go. I, I, I can't say that. Um, what we, 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 we want as, as the Department of Transport and the Ministry, and I want to believe that he's been as government, are ports that are functioning. Mm. And I think we do have a model in South Africa. We, for instance, we've been talking about Sandra. Sunral has a board, a board that takes decisions and implements things. The corporatization of NPA, if you want to put it easy, is that you're going to have a TNPA that works as Sunral, that takes decisions and improves our ports. And I think that is what is missing. So for me, it's, it's about how we are implementing the National Ports Act or not implementing the National Ports Act. Mm. It is in the Act that we need to corporatize that state-owned company so that it is an equivalent of entities such as AXA, for instance, in the aviation sector that owns the airport infrastructure and that gets tariffs from the airlines and whoever else and then, of course, is responsible 
for improving, for maintaining, for constructing those ports. And the board of AXA, for instance, takes decisions and implements that. Unlike the arrangement that we have in the NPA, that is National Ports, I mean Transnet National Ports Authority, where whatever decisions that they take, they will still to subject them to the Transnet Group. So that, 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 that's, that, that's, I think that, that is where the challenge is. Mm. And in our view, if we were then to have that corrected so that TNPA is cooperationalized properly, as in terms of the legislation, then of course we're going to have it performing at the level as your SANRAL, as your AXA, as your ATNS, for instance, because the board will be taking decisions and implementing, and you therefore can hold that board accountable. Okay. Unlike today, even if you identify, for instance, the way maintenance projects that were identified, we have quite a, no, a lot of infrastructure in our ports. We have the dry dock in Deben and in Cape Town as well, but it will need the cases, for instance, the, 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 the gates to close it when the, 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 the vessel sails into the dry dock for, for repairs. All right. But you need that in order for you to do that. And these are maintenance projects. So I, I, I wouldn't want to, to comment on what the, the sector is saying, but I think all that we need to do is to implement the act to the latter. We do that, there will be improvement. Minister Chikunga, let's uh, you and I agree that uh, you're going to pay me a visit in studio. There's lots more to discuss with you. I merely touched on the uh, headline issues. Thank you very much for your time and congratulations indeed on this appointment.